Hi guys, kumusta? Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everyone. Malipa yung Pasko kanatong tanan. Today I'm going to teach you how to make um, the ultimate uh, Filipino pan sip that is usually prepared during this time of the year when everyone gathers um, to celebrate the Christmas and New Year and to be with family to uh, preserve traditions so as you can see I have laid out all the ingredients that we need for this dish and I'm just going to grab them one by one uh, for each of you to get um, acquainted with the ingredients so first I have this um, it's called pancit canton and we are going to use two kinds of um, noodles so I have the pancit canton and I also have this um, it's uh, rice vermicelli so this one uh, for some people who prepare this dish they don't include this uh, we call this as dawungan sa amo when translated that would mean uh, monkey ears so these are actually just mushrooms that are dried. It's a, you know, a different kind of mushroom. So they're dried. And what we are going to do uh, before we can actually mix this up, uh, we have to soak this in warm water for a few minutes. And then once it has softened or it is rehydrated, then we will be able to start um, cutting it up and we can add it um, at some point during the cooking. Um, the base meat for this pancit, um, I actually have um, all kinds. So first, I have this uh, pork, and I've already cut it up. This pork it has fat. So this will be the base meat that we are going to use and we will saute this for a while until all the fat comes out and we will use the same fat to cook the other ingredients. So guys, here we are um, 800 hours later after prepping all the ingredients. No, I'm just joking. Um, Actually, um, I've finished prepping all the veggies. Um, I have a confession. When I cook, I'm usually hungry, so I really don't like um, having to prep so much. So I usually just cook and you know go along, grab everything, and put them in the pan. However, uh, for this dish, it's the prep time that is longer it requires a lot of time because there's a lot of ingredients that we need to prep and um, I'm just going to show you you know again what we have so here I have the pork and I have the shrimp now I left the tail on because that also adds flavor but if you don't like that again like i said the shrimp is also optional and earlier when i spoke about the base meat or the meat that i was using for this dish i actually said i have everything it's because i have shrimp i have pork and right here i have this um as you can see this is a chicken and this one right here is the chinese uh, sausage so if you can see it's a little you know it's a little dry so it's not the 
you know, juicy sausage. So it, it's more like it's dried, but it has a nice sweet uh, flavor. So I always want to include this when I'm making uh, pancit, the Filipino pancit. And here I have the snow peas. Um, as you can see, all I did was just, you know, cut off the tail ends, clean it, and that's pretty basic. And then here, so I have um, the basic spice that I'm gonna be using. I have garlic, ajos, I have um, onion, sibuyas, then I also have this um, bell pepper. So this is um, atzal in Cebuano. And of course, you know, the carrots. Now, if you have time, you've got some skills, you can actually cut them up, you know, in like flowery format. You know, all you do is just cut thin s slices on the end, the edge. And then once you cut them up, they look like this. So it just adds more or less a decorative effect, you know, once you put them all together. But it's not really necessary. You can just cut them up, you know, however you want them to be. And okay, so earlier I was talking about this, you know, the dried mushrooms. Um, this is how they actually look. So I don't know if you can see clearly. They're dried, so dried. And then I soak them up and simply um, cut them up. So this is how it looks right now. And I like this one. I always um, choose to include this when I'm making pancit because it has this um, nice, chewy, crunchy texture. So it adds another layer of texture to the dish. And, um, you know, for this particular dish, it's an all Filipino dish. It requires more prep time, but then, you know, once it's done, it packs all the flavor and the texture. And, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm so excited to actually cook this dish today. I can't wait to finish cooking and then just enjoy this uh, wonderful dish. Wonderful, all Filipino, uh, noodle-based uh, dish. So I'm gonna quickly heat up the pan and then we, we're going to start cooking. So guys, when we make this dish, um, we typically use a deep uh, pan and uh, most Asians use the wok. So it's, it's a pan that is like has a deep you know, base and that makes it easier to mix up all the ingredients for the dish. Um, all I have here is a non-stick pan, but um, I'm sh making sure that I'm using a big pan because there will be a lot of juggling later with respect to um, the noodles. So remember, we are using two kinds of noodles. So I have already preheated the pan. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of oil so just a little bit 
as you can see it's already bubbling up because our pan is already hot um, the first thing that I'm going to add is the pork so as you can see the, the pork has some white layers to it it's the fat uh, we want the fat to come out so right now we'll soak it up in the oil and you know bring up the heat a little and then just continuously um, scatter it inside the pan just like so So this, this will take a little while to finish because we really want to get that browning um, look of the meat. So the browning stage. Um, at this point, I would like to just add a little bit of salt. Now I always add a little bit of salt to bring out, you know, the flavor of the meat. So we'll give this a, probably about five minutes to cook up in its own oil. So guys, as you can see, um, the pork is now really brown and we have also managed to extract most of the oil. So at this point, I'm going to saute the garlic, ajos, in Visayan. So just set aside, you know, the pork. So just nicely soak them up with the oil. So as soon as you start smelling the aroma of the garlic, then you're good to add, you know, the onions. So for now, I'm only going to add, you know, half of the onions. And I'm just going to give it a little time to drench in the oil and cook and saute and bring out its sweetness its aroma and uh, mesh with the aroma of the garlic so for the garlic as you notice you know I I got them whole all I did was pound them but I kept them whole um, this is the usual way that I do it when I cook but you can actually chop them up into tiny bits if you'd like so now I can smell all the nice you know garlic and onion smell wafting through the air so the next thing that we put in is the chicken now we do this because the chicken requires time to, to cook through so just like anything else when you're cooking it's a matter of deciding you know which ingredients need more time to cook so I raised the heat a little and 
at this point I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt just a little bit of salt and I also like to add a bit of soy sauce now the, the purpose of the soy sauce is to give it a little brown color early on so as you can see I'm also using a Filipino um, soy sauce so as you can see it's getting that nice brown color as it cooks it's not pale and we do that because of the I mean we do that using the soy sauce so just raise the heat a little for you to be able to you know get the cooking um, done a little faster so just mix them all up now for chicken and all other you know non-seafood meat um, it's really important to make sure that they are cooked through to avoid any kind of you know food poisoning that may be introduced by some bacteria so I'm going to give this time to actually sit in the pan and I'm going to cover it at medium heat um, I'm also very particular about cross-contamination you know so I'm extra careful when I'm, I'm especially when you know I'm handling meat I make sure that you know I don't use one utensil for more than one item so that's a way to avoid cross-contamination so I'm pretty sure that the chicken is already cooked through just remove the lid and then uh, mix it all up again you know just mix up all the flavors right there So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pile them up to the side again, you know the meat, and then you know what's coming next, right? Uh, it's the shrimp. So I'm going to add the shrimp. So this dish is actually loaded with all kinds of, you know, like protein, meat, and that's a good thing because uh, this dish is actually a complete dish you know like a complete meal because of the meat the veggies and then the noodles or the pasta so here we're just making sure that the shrimp is cooked and you will know when the shrimp is cooked because it's going to turn all red now as you can see I left the tail on because I like the the extra flavor that comes out you know having the shell on for seafood uh, products so I left it like that but for some people you know you don't like the look of tails and whatnot so feel free to remove it you know if you cannot stand the look of tails in your pan so again I'm just gonna give it a little time to cook maybe two minutes or so I'm just gonna put on my timer just two minutes So as you can see the shrimp is already cooked
Now I'm just going to add, uh, you know, one cube of this to give it a little flavor because I don't, I don't use MSG. But this one will enhance the flavor. So just dump it there and then let it cook through. And again, we cover it for three minutes or so, just to make all the flavors combine. So like I said earlier, um, this dish is about timing. So you don't want to overcook some of the ingredients, especially the veggies. That's why, you know, you have to have the right timing. And later, this could get a little messy once we add the noodles because they're a little you know too hard because we have so many ingredients it will be so hard to mix it all together so i have everything that i need you know just all kinds of uh, ladle spatula forks you know whatever that i can find that it will help me mix it all up together so right there I have them ready and also you also need to have a bowl of water because you don't want the base uh, to dry up as you're adding the other ingredients so now it's all cooked What we are going to add now is this right here, the carrots. So this is the point where we add the veggies and since the carrots will require more time, we add it and together we also add this the mushrooms okay so now we have a nice um, fusion of goodies inside the pan Okay, let them just cook through and let all the flavors come out. So let's just give it two minutes or so and then cover it. So at this point, we are going to add the snow peas and we're also going to add the Chinese um, sausage so as you can see our pan is now filling up nicely and this could get tricky because now we don't have much wiggle room for everything so we just have to be like extra, extra enthusiastic about you know mixing everything okay so 
I'm, I'm gonna give it another two minutes to just, you know, cook through. So as we're waiting for the veggies to cook, um, two minutes, I'm also um, soaking the vermicelli, the rice vermicelli noodles, so that it will soften. And the easiest way to do that from the container is to cut it up into manageable portions so that they're not too long once you put them in the pan. Now for this dish, you want the veggies to remain, you know, crunchy. So please try not to overcook the veggies. Because there'll be more cooking time as you add the noodles. So at this point, what I'm going to do, okay, is I'm gonna raise the heat and then I'm gonna add soy sauce all over. Because at this point, I'm going to be adding water as well. So that's about um, a quarter of a cup of soy sauce okay I need to keep my focus so here I'm going to add water uh, just two cups of water at this point and then raise the temperature and then once it heats up then we are going to add the rice vermicelli. So for the rice vermicelli, uh, don't be afraid to cut it up with a kitchen pair of scissors because that will help you easily mix it with the other um, pancit, you know, the pancit canton, the other kind of noodles. So right now, I'm just gonna add this. Okay. Okay. So as we add the noodles, we will try to lower the heat because um, we don't want this thing to dry up. So this is kind of tricky right now. Again, like I said earlier, I don't want the noodles to get soggy. But as you can see right here, see, that's where the, the water is, the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to soak that up right now. So dump everything right there. Okay. Dump everything right there. And then once you do that, then do the trick. So now you do your trick, which is to actually fold everything. So fold everything 
nicely. Uh, use whatever tool you can use in your kitchen that will help you do that job easier. So I'm just gonna do that like so. Okay, so okay, I need another ladle. This one will help me dig further down. Okay, underneath. So at this point, I've already lowered the heat because I don't want to overcook, you know. I don't want to overcook the noodles, the vermicelli, the veggies, and everything else. So just be patient. This requires patience, some skill, and okay, it will be easier if you have an extra hand in the kitchen, you know. This will be a lot easier, but this is not really an impossible task to do. So don't be afraid, you know, it could, it could get messy for a bit. That's a given, but that's the point, you know, that's the point of all this mixing up some stuff will get out of the pan that's all right but um at this point your goal is to actually use the vegetables to um soak up the pancit canton playing around now the noodles that you need to really like cook through is the vermicelli because otherwise you know it wouldn't taste edible if it's not cooked you know it would taste like plastic the pancit even if you don't cook it all the way through this pancit will cook some more as as this dish sits you know even after cooking so I'm gonna add some more of the vermicelli because I still have a little bit left. Okay. So I'm gonna make sure I dump everything in. Now as you can see, we really need a much bigger pan for this job, for this dish, and for all the ingredients that we've had, you know? Now, um, once it gets to this point, I actually have managed to add everything. So as you can see, everything is nicely mixed now. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually running out of space, right? And I still have these veggies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this here, you know, dump it on the sides, okay? And then I'm going to cover it with the noodles. So they're not gonna cook thoroughly. And that's what I want actually, because I want the veggies to have that nice, crunchy, sweet um, taste. So the trick now is I'm just gonna find some little openings where I can put the veggies in. Then the heat, the heat will cook, like partly cook the veggie. So I'm gonna keep on doing that. Okay. Right there. So leave it right there. 
Uh, I'm gonna have another opening here. So again, this is kind of tricky and maybe some of you would say, oh, that's so messy. But no, actually, this has always been, you know, the way that it's always been, you know, when I make this dish. That's part of the challenge. That's part of the excitement of making this dish. And um, eventually you'll get used to all the mixing and all that stuff. There you go. Our pan is full. We didn't burn anything. It looks good. It looks so yummy. So at this point, I'm just gonna shut off the heat and cover this whole thing and let, you know, the heat in the pan cook through the rest of the, the veggies. So there it is, okay. Um, it's a little too too much for one little pan. I need an extra big pan for next year. So there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed it. 